Hi, I'm Anna Ducart from Country Club Receptions, and today we'll be talking about the top 10 things to consider when budgeting for your wedding. It's really important to budget for your wedding so that you can set realistic goals and you're not going outside of your budget and going into debt, but you can still get your, the wedding of your dreams. The first thing to consider when setting your budget is pooling funds. It's really important so that you know if you have any help from your parents or other family members and you can set a realistic budget with those numbers included. An example would be we had a couple who thought that they had about a $10,000 budget but they hadn't asked their parents and when they went to their parents they found out they were actually going to get another $10,000. So they were able to actually have more things included at their wedding that made it really special for them and they wouldn't have known that without asking their parents. Another big thing to consider when budgeting for your wedding is choosing an off-peak day. Off-peak days can have much less expensive prices um, for your venue or any other vendors and it can save you a big chunk of money. It could be an off-peak date, a uh, different month, or it could be a different day of the week. You should definitely check into that. For instance, at some places, June through September might be the best weather, so it's going to be the peak season, whereas October through May is going to be off-peak, not as nice weather, but you can get a really great deal because those months are not as popular. A typical wedding budget is usually divided up into a couple different sections. The main chunk of your budget will definitely, definitely be dedicated to the reception, probably about 50%. That would include the venue, the catering, and the ceremony site. Photography or videography is about 10 to 12 percent. Flowers can range anywhere from 5 to 10 percent depending on what's in season and what kind of flowers you want and how elaborate you want it to be. Depending on if you're going to have a live band or a DJ, it could be anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of your budget. Parking and transportation is usually not a huge chunk of your budget, but it's definitely something to consider depending on where your ceremony and reception location is. The next thing to consider is your guest list. It's extremely important to make lists of guests that you think may or may not be able to come. Keeping an A, B, and C list is really important. That way, you, if you know that there are certain guests that may not be able to make it from out of town, you can easily insert your B or C list guests and add them to your guest count. Another really important thing to consider is comparing the venues that you're looking at. Some venues are very all-inclusive and set up things for you, include things like dance floors, tables, linens, glassware, those kinds of things that are definitely not something you want to deal with. You may save money doing some things yourself, but then you have to deal with setting it up yourself, asking friends and family, or hiring a wedding planner to do all of that for you. An all-inclusive venue is really beneficial so that everything's taken care of for you and you don't have to stress on your big day. Photography is a really important part of your wedding day and it's definitely not something to skimp out on. You want to make sure that you're hiring a photographer who is professional, who does great photos, and who will actually show up when they say. Some people like to hire their friends, which can be great, but unfortunately we've had experiences where that photographer doesn't show up. It's also really important to be able to connect with your photographer. If you can connect with that person, you're more able to look natural in your photos and it makes for an amazing photo album from your wedding. When picking out your flowers and decor for your wedding, consider a venue that already has a natural look with lots of floral or greenery around it. That way you can save money, especially for your ceremony. You won't have to do a lot of decorating. Another tip is to incorporate the floral from your ceremony into your reception. Maybe you have an altar that has two beautiful centerpieces and after the ceremony is over, those will be placed on the head table or repurposed somewhere else in the room. Picking the entertainment for your wedding is definitely a personal choice. A great option is a DJ who can provide music for not only the ceremony and the reception, they can also provide mics for the officiant and the groom, and possibly other packages like a photo booth and uplighting. However, if you're looking for something that will get the crowd energy going, maybe you consider looking into getting a live band who can also provide music for the ceremony as well. It's definitely important to remember when you're setting your budget for your wedding that there will be some expenses that come up after you've booked most of your vendors. Don't forget that things like bridesmaid gifts, groomsmen gifts, the rehearsal dinner, tips for your vendors, transportation costs, things like alterations for your dresses, alterations for the groomsmen, the groom's gift, the bride's gift. Another thing to remember is that when you're sending out invitations, postage for your invites is extremely expensive and can add up very quickly. Those things may come up and are very necessary to incorporate into your budget. 
At the end of the day, it's not about how much money you spend. It's about you and your fiance having an amazing time. Planning will help you definitely have less stress, but it's about your special day. For more information, visit countryclubreceptions.com. When planning the day, the big wedding <laughs> day, the most important thing. <laughs> I cannot get the words out. <laughs> Set a budget for your self. Now there's a B. Postage is expensive. Yeah, yeah, totally.